right, it's Ash from Brick Life Social Club, and today I've got Ash Mahoney from Mahoney Brickworks. Ash, how you doing, yes, mate? mate? Good, mate. Right, good. Time to finally, uh, yeah, yeah finally, up. yeah, definitely. Um, so, guys, I did do uh, on the tools today. I don't know how it went. Just give me a comment. Let me know before you got on. But we're here with Ash, and we're going to talk everything about brickwork. So, Ash, tell me about Mahoney Brickworks. Yeah, so um, dad's a bricklayer, whole family background, all bricklayers. Um, I've been interested in it from a young, young boy, five, six years of age. Um, always knew through school that I'd be leaving and become a bricklayer. Um, 16 then, I went to get an apprenticeship with a uh, boy at home, Tyler Wimper. Yeah. I applied for everybody, and no one wanted to give me one. So in the end then, dad was like, right, come with me on the yard, <laughs> on the labouring again, look. So I went back with him. Um, Thirty pound a day. I was on when I first started. Uh, run the yard been for a fair few years. I think then in 2008 we had the recession coming. Yeah, yeah. So left the bit playing then. Yeah. yeah. Went and worked in Bean and Bargains in the fish and chip shop just to make ends meet. And yeah. um, and then I never forget it. I was on a night shift over in Erdington at the Bean and Bargains. Dad phoned me up and went, "The bit line's kicking off again." I was like, "Sound." <laughs> off I went like. Um, yeah, I just left, just left the shop. I said, I ain't no noticing nothing, so I'm gone. Like, I'm back to what I, where I belong. So I went back with Dad then, and then at 2019 I had my son, and then at say 19, 20 I started my Honey Brickworks off. So and, it's been uh, going for what? 11 years now, 11 when years. I first actually went to um, the Wheat Chief and just got a sign made up, my Honey Brickworks with a number on Is it. Is that the same logo? Like no, no, it was very, it was very similar, but it was just, it just my Honey Brickworks, that's all it was. The yeah. turning dreams into reality come into it a few years ago, that's my little catchphrase that I've yeah. uh, run with. And, um, and then, yeah, so. Uh, from then to now, like, you know, I was doing it in between, a bit on site with my dad, doing this in the weekends. So, so have, having your own business, um, so going from leaving your dad, working on the sites and that, and then going working for yourself, yeah. has it been very up and down? Have you had, you had you hit walls on occasion? Yeah, certainly, yeah. So, um, so I had me, I was with, with my dad for a bit, then I left. I used to do a lot of this on my own. I had no labour around me, nothing. Yeah. I did everything on my own. There's a lot of pictures on my Facebook page from back then. Um, and then I got on site then with the firm which my dad used to work for, Langer yeah. Build. I had a gang of 10 bricklayers who was doing that for about two, three years. And then 2016, we had some hiccups on the job. Yeah. So I was not with certain things. He said to me, look, I'll give you a chance because you're Andy's son and we know you know yeah. what you're about, but your team's not up to scratch, so you know. Um, give me another opportunity, but it didn't work out basically, we had to leave the job. Yeah. So that was that. So 2016, then I went back to my dad's gang for eight months, yeah. started doing a bit of boxing. It allowed me to go home, no paperwork, no nothing. We just went to site, yeah, eight yeah. till three. Takes away the home. stress, yeah. Yeah, that's it, I had no stress. So I've done a bit of boxing, and then everyone just kept calling me then, saying, Ash, when are you coming back out? When's it kicking off again? Come on, get your trial out, let's get these extensions done. And I couldn't say no in the end, that many people called me. So that was 2017, so this now, yeah. basically, so that's where the, the main impact has been. I'd say the past four or five years, really. And, and I'm going to go back to one of the topics that I had today is nightmare customers. Have yeah. you had your share of nightmare customers? Um, I wouldn't say I've had any bad experiences, but I've had a few times, you know, there's been a few jobs where it hasn't gone to plan and then the customers are unhappy, it hasn't gone to plan. You take on not too much workload, but having a gang of bricklayers, or sometimes, as you will all know, you're waiting on scaffolds, you're waiting on a floor yeah, to yeah. go in, this, that, whatever. So you have to have a lot of jobs going to keep yourself going and, and the yeah, lads yeah. with you. So sometimes projects can slightly slip out and then the customer turns on you and you get a bit sticky. But yeah. as a whole, I don't think I've had anyone which I can think, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've had a few occasions where I've been let down by other subcontractors who, um, for example, electrician's going to turn up or yeah. plumber's going to turn up. And they've turned up, or they're not. They say they're going to be here at two. Yeah, they yeah. say, oh, then it turns out to be Friday, and they turn up, and then they don't finish the job, and then the clients get it all like, oh, yeah, yeah. What was going on? You said it was going to be done on this date. Plus, it's going to be done on this date. It's like, yeah, I just load the bricks. Yeah, but yeah the yes. job's in your name, so you've got to deal with it. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. You yeah, need exactly. a good, you need a good portfolio of people around behind you that's reliable, isn't it? And that, that is hard to get as well because everyone's got their own stuff to deal with as well yeah and that's a bit like what you've just signed up to now uh, sq2 sq2 so. yeah ryan yeah what I, I think what an idea and to yeah. be fair you know not saying this in the right kind of way but i do get a lot of work through myself anyway but i thought you know what 
If I'm gonna drop someone else in there, it's gonna yeah. drop a few jobs in over the year. I want to support what he's doing anyway. I think what he's doing on his page is just thing. yeah, exactly. Like you know, what a bloke. His stories say it all. Like he's out every day. Like me, he's doing yeah. a bit. Like you know. Um, do you have an apprentice? No, no, not right now. I've got a, a labourers that are ready to start stepping into it. I'm just teaching them. They're doing a bit of spreading. A lot of my pointing up as well. My labourers do most of my pointing up, to be fair. Um, and then that's the way I like to work it. Yeah, bring yeah. them through that way. My dad's always said a good labourer will make a good bit that. And yeah. I think it starts with the basics. Know the basics and then step up. Yeah, so I had a conversation. Who did I have the conversation with? I had the conversation with Steve Kelly. Yeah. Um, and we, he's got Skelly Britain work. Um, oh, I have now. Uh, yeah. The conversation. Yeah, I'm for you. <laughs> yeah. Conversation that I had with him is that odd carriers sometimes um, don't always make the great brick layers because they haven't learned it from the very from day dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like me and you, we went to college. We, well, we've done I think that college, by the way. Not, <laughs> not oh, a college brick layer. You left school. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. went straight. You went on the track. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You, you was on site. And then BQ qualified now. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so you were you. You've done it from 15, 16, yeah, yeah, and you've yeah. gone all the way through. Whereas a hog carrier typically comes in at 25, and he realises actually, I want some money like the bricklayers, yeah, I will yeah. try and learn. So, is their heart a passion with bricklaying, or is their heart a passion because they want some more money? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I've never looked at it in that way, to be fair. Because yeah. me and you love brickwork. Yeah. I'm sitting reading the brickwork magazine on yeah, the train yeah. on the way up here. Yeah. There's a hog, I'm not saying hog carrier is not going to do that, but it's yeah. ingrained. From it depends one. on their attention to detail to the job as well. Now, I openly admit, I was a shit at odd carrier. Like, I loved it. I, I had the shoulder well. and everything. My yeah. trap here was huge. One arm bigger than the other. And um, it depends on That's how they... Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it depends on how they look at their job as well. Like, yeah. I used to look at that as a profession as well. Labouring for a bricklayer. Oh, yeah, is, definitely. It, you've got to get it right. You've got to be good to, 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 for the bricklayer to make money. If you're not any good, then you ain't going to make no money. Like, I, you know. I made the mistake of when you're loading out the scaffold, I put all the bricks in the back of the scaffold. Yeah. Uh, and then, on a five-bowl. And then, and then the, uh, the... I don't know. And then the... Uh, <laughs> I had that on my story the other week. Someone screamed Batty Boy out the window. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same again. <laughs> Yeah, oh well, we're, we're not batty boys. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'd loaded out all the bricks to the back of the scaffold, and then the bricklayer looked at me and gone, "Well, how, how's the hog carrier going to get past? And how am I going to get the bricks? And I've got to reach to the back of the scaffold." And it was a simple thing of just moving the bricks two boards. Yeah, yeah. And it made such a difference. All the difference, yeah. Uh, and it's just learning them little things, I think, as as you go. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, and that's what I say. Look, in my my terms, in my dad's term, a good lad makes a good bricklayer because even down to the setting up. You got someone that's gone to say just gone to college and then they get on site and say if someone goes oh build an extension yeah, yeah. they're not going to know how to set themselves up in that sort of no. sense as well so that's where i think it's good if you've got the the drive to continue to push your laboring days and yeah. then get onto the trail but if you're just laboring for a job you're yeah. never going to be a bricklayer for a job no. if you're laboring to get somewhere yeah. then you will progress yeah you know what where was we um Labouring, talking about labouring. Labourers, yeah. So, yeah, a labourer coming through the ranks, it's always a nice thing, especially if you've had a labourer that's been with you from day dot, yeah. and he's learned your habits and tricks and all that, yeah. then he's perfect to stay with, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah. labourer, Luke, he uh, is a good lad, Lord, and whenever we, we have, you know, some of my stories, I have a lot of days where I'll go off elsewhere, like I've yeah, gone yeah. down to Southampton, Surrey, London, loads of times. If I've got to go somewhere and get it done at that, Luke comes with me, look, and to be fair, he knows how it work. He doesn't, I don't have to say yeah. nothing to him. Yeah, it's a bit different know. to getting like a, get, picking up a labour off the, just stuff of like Facebook or something yeah, you've not yeah. met before. Yeah. Or a bricklayer you've never met before to come and join you. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll yeah. probably find that he'll do a better job than any, like anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and although someone will give it the beans. Yeah. That I'm be mustard and all this. Yeah. So that will actually fact, mate. I've had this geezer with me five years, he knows me. Yeah, that's the, that's, yeah. The, that's what it's about. And you, you take, I took him from nothing, he didn't know a thing, didn't know nothing. Yeah. Taught him everything on the way, and you know, I will continue to teach him as well, like, you know. Especially, say, with the young kids, I put on my story earlier about Sam Whitaker. Um, yeah. The older bricklayers giving him some, giving him some jib. And um, I think, you know, with the young kids coming through, yeah, they can have attitude and they're young and they do have attitude, but I think you've got to give them a little bit of time and go, I was that person as well. Yeah. You know, and um, I, I give them a chance to learn. I think times have changed. I yeah. mean, when I was, so you were 17 when you was doing your apprenticeship. Yeah. I would have been about 16. How yeah, old are you yeah. now? 
I'm 30 now. 30, so yeah, you're three, two years older than me. Yeah. So yeah, about the same time time frame. Yeah, um, yeah. I got some fucking shit. Did you? Oh, yeah. I got some shit. Um, I was talking to the guy, one of the guys that I've done my apprenticeship with. Um, he was actually 21 yeah. when I was 16, and I phoned him today. Because um, he's doing a bit of work on the tools. And he, I said, I remember that time when you had me with two lighters underneath the drum. Yeah. In, in the freezing cold. And he said, if you do that, you'll defrost <laughs> the ice in the sand. Yeah. And he was wetting himself. So Max, you know you know about that story. But. Yeah. I'm very fortunate. I've heard a lot of stories about people coming up the brick layers and getting yeah. shit off the older ones now. I'm very fortunate and lucky that it was my dad that brought me through the ranks. So yeah, he didn't you know, get too so. much shit. Yeah, you know, we used to nail us as, as his kids, yeah. probably even more than anybody else, but it's always held me in good stead as well, like, you know. Um, yeah. It's good, to be fair. Like, my old man to me, like, I don't worry about building inspectors, I worry about my dad. Yeah, yeah. He, he clocks everything that I put on or anything that, you know, and he'll tell me, and, that, and that's the best thing, you know, we've coming from that background for me, to be yeah. fair. Yeah, I think if, you're, if your son would happen to bring that up, yeah. it's going to be the same thing. He's so already gonna, doing a bit, he's you're 11 gonna, now. You're going to go... Yeah pinholes there in the joints or that's it that face has got a chip out of it yeah just stuff like that and it's just picking him up and it's getting into the habit of knowing what you can and can't get away with yeah and it's not even get, i hate that term, get him, yeah it's not yeah it's people not people don't really get it it's knowing what's an acceptable the standard. leniency to yeah. what's yeah what, what what's what's reasonable is in is there is it cost effective and makes any sense for me to take a brick out or do i leave it because it's all it's right. right. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. But then, all right, it's still not good enough. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as Brit layers, we know what we're talking about when yeah. we say that. I think anyone else wouldn't really understand. But as Brit layers, we know what we can and can't get away with. Basically, it was like I done a little short video the other day, and it was flicking the brick. Yeah. And it was, and it's not because I'm just trying to show off. It's one of those things where you pick it up as a brick layer, picking it up, flicking it around, spinning it around. You just fall in there. You don't get taught that, but yeah. it's such a key little hand skill. Yeah, yeah. Um, I tried to just like. Especially with the type of brick which has only got one way to lay with the water, like, you know. Yeah, so the feather on it. That's um, it, yeah. Or engineering bricks. Because you could pick up an engineering brick, but one side's got the number stamped yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that flat. a few times, so you, man. You're like, <laughs> you like, you come back to one and someone goes, I remember the case that I love it, he goes, is that a feature, is it? And I go, what? And they go, come with me. He goes down it. He goes, what's that all about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're there with, uh, we use, um, uh, what do they call them now? Uh, the knives for plasterboard. Yeah, well, I've, my axe. Have you seen my axe? I've got, yeah. a, I've got one on the back of the axe. Yeah, I can't remember what they're uh, called. I can't remember what they're called. Yeah, but we use them to take out bricks whenever we have to. It's great. Oh, really? Yeah, so, part, so the plasterboard saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to chop a brick out when it's still wet. Yeah, quickly, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, with that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great, yeah, great that's tip it. for you guys there. There you go, get one of them for you. Same with when you start, uh, we do a lot of coring holes. Yeah. For Hessian down in there. Yeah, we yeah. We use that. Uh, There's loads of different ways of that with the cavities, isn't there? We've used the Hessian, we've. Or just my personal preference was that you just take a block out. If you've got a, if you've got a tray down in there, yeah. take the blocks out on the inside and clean it every day. Or yeah, so we to talk about like, with a tray, run yeah. a Hessian inside the tray. On yeah, the yeah. Tray and then she was saying take, take a block out. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, right, that's yeah, how yeah. we used to do it on the side. Yeah. We used to leave a block out on the inside yeah, and then course. just get your hands yeah. in, clean the trays out. Because right. the SCN idea. can get stuck. Yeah. You know, so there's loads of different ways in there. What's your number one tip for an apprentice? Oh, so I've, I've just, I'm, I'm not even an apprentice. I'm at school. Yeah. I want to go into bricklayer. I don't even know if I want to go into bricklayer. I yeah. want to become a bricklayer, maybe. Might want to be a chippy. What, what's, what, what would you say to sell it to a young lad who wants to become, young, even young girl? To get into bricklaying, or yeah. why would I sell bricklaying to them? Yeah. It's, it's a very, don't get in it, in it for the money, because if you get in it for the money, then you're in it for the wrong reason. Yeah. You've got to have passion for it. You've got to have pride in your quality. One, your appearance as well. You know, I hate, I hate the tracksuit. Bit layers on site, oh. half way down the ass, t shirts all ripped. So, no, come on, this is a, a well paid profession and yeah. you've got to look professional for it. So, one's obviously your parents, don't come on site with tracksuit bottoms hanging up your ass. Yeah. Um, two is have a passion for it, an eye for it as well. Yeah. And three, like I said, just don't get it for the money reason, get in it for the satisfaction that you're going to get out of it. You're going to do this forever. It's yeah. just going to be money until comes. You, it does until come. and the money does come. I you know, even the worst of bricklayers are on good money. Yeah, you know, so. I mean, I, I'm about you, but when I was an apprentice, I was on um, £30 a day thereabouts. That's what I, my so labouring days started with my dad. Um, 30 quid a day, and then it just slowly creeps year after year after year. Then eventually, once you've hit about the four or five year mark, yeah. 
you just know when it sits. I yeah. just know it, it. I knew when it sat, and I was like, yeah, I, that's it. I know yeah. now. There's not much. I haven't built everything under the sun. There's loads of arches I've knocked on and things like that. But you just know when you. You just know when you're comfortable. It, it's the confidence. Yeah. The confidence gets to a point where you're like, I can deal with that situation. I can deal with this situation. Yeah. I know how to get around that. I know how to get around this. Yeah. So and that's just experience, isn't it? It's just yours in the bag, basically. So that takes me to what's your biggest cock up? Uh, so biggest cock up. We've had a perfect right. story. My dad will probably watch this and he'll know this. This is a good story. This is so I'm doing a footing on a house. Um, the, the concrete's running round level all the way to, to around and then it stops where the, the service is running in. Yeah, yeah. And opposite from the services was 75 mil higher. Right. So I built my corner on the front and I built my corner on the back. Oh. I've got five course of damp on the back and I've got four course of damp on the front and it completely and utterly lost my head. So there's probably an eight metre run down the side of an house, seven, eight metres. I've run my block work through, this is before my laser level days as well, which yeah. I said I'm a story, but I'm going to do my giveaway for the laser levels um, because it's helped me massively. So I've run my block work, put my level on it, it's 75 mil out, but on my level, it's not telling me it's 75 mil out. And my mind's baffled, literally baffled. I went down to my dad's house, I'm in bits, I've got tears coming out of my eyes. Dad, I don't know what to do, it's baffling me, what the fuck's going on with it? He's got the experience in them, so he's come up to the job with me. And the block work, three course of blocks was running through. I've still got the pics on my phone, so I can get them up if anyone wants to see them. <laughs> three course of blocks was running through, and all he did was put the line on one end, drop it down 74 mil the other end. Tom just still saw it, he went there, Dad, now it's level. Now I was baffled because I've got three course of blocks, and I'm like, my level's shut, telling me it's level. Yeah, yeah. But it, and that was my, I wouldn't say a biggest cock up in a sense of Lord, like, the whole job went fucking pink yeah. tongue. But that was the one for me, the one moment in Lord where I was like, that was fucking So you've re- all you've really done is you've. Split, split course so instead of cutting them as you're going what i should have done was because the there was a 75mm difference in the in the length of the footy yeah i should have done 75mm yeah. to nothing on the first exactly. course yeah. but, but you flipped it round now so, so you've gone from nothing to 75 so mil. yeah that's it basically so the, the, the third course of block was eventually a cut course and yeah. i had to flip it on the inside then it was just one of them i think it was rob telling me um that over in like germany or something what they yeah. do is they they don't really care how it's built and be built out of level because then what they do is they put a concrete ring beam on the last 10 courses to bring uh, it level. so you could be 100 mil out of level one side 75 yeah, mil yeah. on the back number 200 mil on the front don't matter because yeah. they just put a concrete ring beam around yeah, the top yeah. so the top's always level yeah yeah and they yeah. render it who was level. it was um who was t- was it you Will rob who was talking about that big block of apartments and he set data marks all the way around it and there was a fucking pig in the middle of it when it come together was it you or rob i can't remember who it was uh, is it you I, I built I built um, two walls that yeah. were on the ground floor they didn't line up they didn't yeah. need to line up but when they got to the next floor they had to line through <laughs> yeah yeah so when I got to the next level and tried lining the brickwork through yeah. it was 75 mil pig in it that was it I remember so you were telling went, me yeah, over yeah. 75 mil someone lost it day. Um, did you have to go back for the windows then you found it out for the window courses or something no that it might have been Rob saying it I can't remember but that was a good story as well no, so I, I set out set out the block work on the ground floor but there was a dividing corridor yeah but then on the next lift the the internal block work had a lintel over it and that block wall went straight through and that was taking the roof oh okay so then when i've put the joist in i've gone to run this brickwork for this block work through yeah. i've realized that my block work's going down and then it starts kicking off to the right oh uh, yeah so i thought oh fuck, i won't deal with that um talking to the right people getting some yeah, help yeah. um basically we just put a series of lintels in there um, and just straightened it out yeah, and yeah, lost yeah. it in the joists because the joists were like two through five joists they were big okay. joists moved it all over got rid of it it's fine but yeah, it was yeah. just learning to when you're doing stuff like that it's just a string of line all the way through yeah not, yeah not, not pull tingling. from one end to the other exactly. yeah 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 um but my a couple of my boys done that not long ago uh, they it was a 30 minute stretch yeah um but set a profile in the middle and went from middle to end yeah. And then went middle to end. So it went middle to left, middle to right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you put the line all the way through the middle, through, through from one end <laughs> to the other, it came out. Yeah. So we had to, so I had to tell the guys to take it down, string it all the way through, and I, I'm, I hate tingles. Yeah, they yeah, always yeah. cause problems. Yeah. Always. With a 50 pound notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what trail is it used? Uh, Marshalltown, London, uh, it's a void. I'm, yeah, void. You've never changed it, have you? No, the same trail. It's, it's Dad's trail. Well, obviously, I've changed the trail, yeah. but I'm not. 
I don't know much about much, but change yeah, the handles and yeah, change everything yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, same room. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was just that's the trail that Dad's always used, and that's the trail I bought from Tallman, and uh, yeah, same stuck with the same style. Don't like the other ones. Don't like the really long ones. The Navas, I think they are. Uh, no, so no. it's a wide bottom. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's even got a trail tattooed on his hand, look. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so same style trail from, from the off lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, levels, values, and type R levels now, they're a little bit wider. Yeah, yeah, no, I find them so much easier. I never bought them in the end, I had to use the 96 2 series, yeah, so yeah, just as normal masonry level. Yeah, uh, but then I got given a superior level, okay, yeah, yeah, flash cannon. They're nice as well, they're big, yeah, they are smart, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite brick to lay? Um, Bina Burger, Ibstock, London. Um, I've, I've got to say Ibstock because I've laid leading thousands of them. You lie a lot around in Birmingham. Yeah, there's loads around here. There's more Leicester way as well, Leicester, Coventry. Okay. Um, I've done a lot of work up that direction as well. Look, nice. so, and yeah, and it, Ibstock's local to me and it's, it's that direction. So yeah, I've got to say Ibstock. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah>. Bina Burger. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, that's Ash Mahoney uh, from Mahoney Brickworks. Anything you want to add to that? No, no, just come and check the page out, people. I'm always on my story every day, having a chit chat, telling you what I'm doing and where I'm going. So if you want to come through and have a look, then come and have a look, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's on Instagram probably every day. Um, that's why he lays no bricks anymore. He lays bricks every day. He's got great stories, great content, um, and he's going to learn a lot if you give him, give him a follow. So, that's my homie. Yeah, Cheers, buddy. nice one, mate.